This is Larry Lawton, and he's an ex-jewel thief. Larry's a former career criminal, once considered the biggest jewel thief in the United States. I'm a happy dude. I mean, I'm free. Now I'm free. So the first thing I do, that day is August 24th. All right, everybody. Back at it again, man. I hope you like the other part, the part one of uh, chapter 14, Free at Last, uh, Gangster Redemption. That was when I first originally got out of prison, what they call to a halfway house. And then got kicked back into Alpha. So this is going to be continuation from that. So this is uh, Gang's Redemption Free at Last Part 2. And uh, I'll jump right into it. And I'll update you guys on a bunch of stuff with the book and stuff like that uh, right after this. So here I am. I'm heading back to prison. The marshals come and get me out of the prison in uh, out of the halfway house in Orlando, Florida. The, the worst run prison or halfway house probably ever... But, you know, thinking back, I look at them and I said, listen, those people had no idea what they were doing. Here, here they were, they were taking young kids. And I mean 26, 27-year-old college kid. They're making him the director of a halfway house with dudes like myself coming out of prison who just survived some of the worst shit in the world. And now you're going to tell us how to run our lives to such a minute degree? Man, you're, you're, you're treading on, on water, you know. I talked about this with cops all the time. One of the biggest problems cops have is how they communicate with people. You know, you can't talk down to people. And I'm going to get into all of that about what the cops did to a friend of mine. And I'm going to talk about him in, in this chapter. But here I am. The, the marshals come and get me. And, you know, it's funny because they take me to the, uh, to the jail. And now they also now have to come and get me, the marshals, to bring me back to Coleman Prison from Seminole County Jail. Now, I go to Coleman Prison. You got to remember, I was at this exact same facility back in 1999 when I left Atlanta. So I'm going back to a prison I was actually at. And I knew the prison. I knew the layout. Still knew some dudes in the prison. So I get to the prison, and I didn't even have to go to Captain's Review. So they knew I only had three weeks left. Three weeks left. I'm going to a real prison on the yard with three weeks left. So I get off the bus, you know, uh, not the, the marshals take, took me in a van from the from the prison, Seminole County Jail, they took me in a van to Coleman Prison, which is in Central Florida. And it's not far from Seminole, probably maybe an hour, hour and a half, I'm guessing. So they take me from Seminole County Jail back to Coleman Prison. I go in, I go through receiving a discharge, I get stuff, they assign me to, I'll never forget the that unit B, which is they had A house, B house, and C house, three major houses. I'm in the center house, B house. Sure enough, word got out that Lawton's back. Lawton's coming back. When I say word got out, that the inmates know, all the convicts know. So who do I see on the yard? Vic Arena, the mob boss for the Columbos who had the war with the Persicos when we were, were you know, back in the 90s, in the early 90s. He was trying to take over from uh, Carmine Persico. Uh, the family, and it was a big war, and it was you could read about the Colombo Wars in, in, in any way you want. Well, Vicarina, little Vicarina, I love the Vic used to go to church all the time, and probably still does. He even became a guy who puts the the the, the Eucharist in your mouth. What do they call? Him? I say he's a murderer, a killer, and, and he's now all this you know religious stuff. But it was so funny. So Vic sees me, hey Larry, big hug and all that, and everybody, hey Larry, you're back. What the hell's going on? What did you do? What are you fucking nuts? You crazy? What are you back? And it was so funny because when I got back on that yard, I just had 11 years of fighting the prison system. And dudes respected me a lot. And they knew who I was. They knew I was a, 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 a convict, a real convict, that I wouldn't take shit from anybody. I was not a rat. I wasn't a pedophile. I had a good reputation in the prison system. And especially being I was on the East Coast and even the Southeast Coast in prisons most of the time. So people kind of knew me. I went out the West over there at Arkansas and Yazoo, Mississippi. But I had a very good reputation for fighting the system and not giving a fuck. Because when you're transferring and you're going on planes and you're a new, new guy, then you're in Oklahoma City 
and you're talking to the guy, man, Lawton, what happened? Hey, man, where you at? This guy, oh, yeah, he's a good dude. He's a convict. He's a stand-up guy. All that kind of stuff. So I got to good reputation. I'm in the prison. Now, I'm in this prison for three weeks. I'm still on my guard because, listen, jealousy is a funny thing. When you're on a yard in prison and dudes know you're going home and you know they're never going home, never. These dudes' life sentences. I mean, there's a lot of guys with life sentence in prison and here I am going home. So anyway, here I, it was really good. I mean, I, I saw Vic Arena and I saw a bunch of other guys and I saw a couple of the outlaw motorcycle gang dudes I know and they all hug. We go to the yard every day. We eat lunch every day. Hey, when you get out, talk to this guy. See hello to this guy. Now you got to remember, now I'm getting out of prison. I don't have to go to a halfway house. I'm literally a free man. And when I say free, all, oh, you're still not free. Let me let me backtrack. I had to go when I got out. Well, anyway, th- here it is. I got three weeks. I do my time. I'm pretty cautious. Every day I'm, I'm having uh, breakfast with Vic Arena, a couple other guys. You know, to tell me, hey, be right, talk to this guy, don't come back, lad, don't be like one of these losers. Most dudes in prison who've been there, like I was, and a lot of the old convicts, we don't want to see you guys in prison. That's why I do what I do today. But I don't want to see dudes out there. A lot of these young guys who watch my videos, I don't want to see you guys in prison. I really don't. That's that's some of the stuff that, that sickens us. We see guys like you that are making mistakes, and, and, and we really don't like it a lot. So anyway... I get out of prison, and this time getting out of prison, I know how to handle a bus. I don't tell anybody that I'm coming home. I don't want to tell anybody. I, Larry Lawton, is getting out of prison. I'll never forget the date was August 24th, 2007. August 24th, 2007. So happens to be Uncle Louie's birthday. That's the guy in one of the videos you'll see with the up sound upside down video I do in one of the videos in my library here. It's called Uncle Louie. I yell at him. It's a funny crack up video. You got to look at it. Check it out. That's Uncle Louie. So Uncle Louie is so dear to my heart. He's since died. But anyway, I want to come home. It's his birthday. And I want to see my dad who gave me the car. He had the beginning of Alzheimer's. So, you know, I want to see my dad. I'm very close to my dad and mom and my whole family. So I take a bus from Coleman, Florida into Melbourne, Florida. Now that bus ride probably took three hours and it's really a two hour trip if that. But they stopped one or two places and I ended up getting here and they drop you off at the Greyhound uh, bus station down near Melbourne Airport is where the bus drops you off. So I then take a cab. Back then they didn't have Uber. This is 10 years ago, 2007, more 13 years ago. And they take it, take a cab, and I take a cab all the way home. And I surprise my mom and dad, and they freak out. I mean, when I say freak out, freak out. Oh, my, my God, my mother's screaming. My dad is so happy. But I'll be honest with you. I saw the change in my dad. And my dad used to visit me in every prison. And at the end, when I went to Forest City, Arkansas, or in Yazoo, Mississippi, he couldn't come because of his illness with Alzheimer's. And so for the last few years, I didn't get to see my dad, I think once. And I will tell you, it broke my heart, and it does to this day, because he passed since. He, My dad died in uh, December of 2010, and I was out three years. And I took care of my dad along with my sisters. We're a very close family, and I'm changing my dad's diapers. And if you don't think that breaks your heart, because here I am, I, I screwed up my life. Because of my choices, I went to prison. I don't blame the prison system for that. I blame the prison system for being fucked up, not taking care of people, making them worse criminals. I don't blame them for me going to prison. I made the mistakes to go to prison, and and I'm not proud of that. And I lost the best years of my dad's life. My dad died three years after I got out, Alzheimer's, and the last year and a half, two years, he was real bad, with literally changing his diapers and... And it's the worst disease in the world. And uh, I have so much respect for caregivers of people with Alzheimer's and hospice. We ended up having to have hospice in. And I have so much love and respect for those people who help the dying people and the families of the dying people. 
So it was really, really hard. But I did get to see my dad. So here I am. I saw my dad. I'm totally blown away. He's so happy I'm home. My mom is so happy. It's like coming in the, the night shiny armor, come to help and all that. Because when he got real bad, he ended up leaving the house one day. And I used to work out at a gym. And the gym person actually heard me talk about my dad and then called me. Luckily, we would have found him. Otherwise, he could have been killed in the street. But anyway, getting back from the Alzheimer's story, here I am home. I'm literally home. I'm a happy dude. I mean, I'm free. Now I'm free. So the first thing I do, that day is August 24th. I take my car. I got the car. And I take the... Uh, I didn't have it there. I had it at the house because when I went back to jail, it was taken back to my house where I, I live because it was at the halfway house when I went to jail, but somebody picked it up and brought it back to my house where I live in Melbourne, Florida. So I do that. I get in a car and I go to Uncle Louis and Phil, Phil I mean, Constantino, the, the, the dearest people to me. I go to their house and it's Uncle Louis' birthday. And I saw them, and Phyllis is crying, and she's one of these old Italian ladies. She wanted to make me breakfast, and she's wanting to eat me. She was a, she was so uh, embarrassed because I came in, and she was in her pajamas. It's about 9 in the morning. She's in her pajamas, and Uncle Louie's just so happy to see me. I mean, we're talking, we're, we're just sat down quick. We even had a, a espresso and a little Sambuca, and we're just talking and stuff. And I find out, my buddy Jojo, my very close dear friend, Joe Frumini, who I love again. To this day, he's alive, Joe. Jojo is 84. And so what happens, Jojo was having taken Louie out for his birthday, which we all did. They used to call us the Three Amigos, myself, Joey, and, and Louie. And they used to call us the Three Amigos. So Joey was taking Louis and Phyllis out to dinner at Caraba's restaurant in in, in uh, Brevard County. So here I am. I says, don't say anything, Lou, Phil. Don't say a word. I'm going to just show up at this Carabas. So I ended up getting balloons and flowers and for Louie and something. And they're at, they're sitting in, in the uh, Carabas restaurant. They'll never forget this to this day. None of us will forget it. So I bring in these balloons and this stuff to Lou and Joe looks at me and almost passes out. This is one of my friends who used to visit me in prison. He knew I was getting out. He didn't know when. He didn't know the whole circumstance of me going back and everything else. He knew I was crazy. He almost passes out. His wife, Pam, is like freaking out. They're like, oh my. We sat down and I drank wine and bullshitted with them for three hours. The whole restaurant knew what happened. And it was just such a home reunion with three of my greatest friends and, and talk about never forgetting those are things that are in me forever i'm out out of prison and first thing you have to do within 72 hours is you got to report for federal probation okay i'm under a tougher probation organized crime because i was under the rico act so i ended up seeing a, a probation officer named dave Lebinsky. he could be an asshole at times and he could be okay at times I was in my gym. I was in Health First Gym, pumping iron. And who shows up in my gym? The probation officer with a cup, looking right down at me. I got weights on me. He says, come on, you got to go take a piss. Are you fucking kidding me? I wasn't even a drug charge. But are you kidding me? He just wanted to show that he had control. Came to my house where I live with my mom and dad and would be able to walk in anytime he wants and search that house, do anything he wants. And he was a prick. I mean, at times he was a prick. And it was so funny because the longer I was out, I had a friend of mine, a judge, Joe Fermini, a sitting judge, actually tell me, Lab, be careful. You know they want to see you mess up. They don't like when people make it because that's job security if you don't make it. Look, he's a, just an, he's a convict. He's not going to make it. He's going to mess up. You know, it's sad that the whole system wants to see me fail. They want to see me fail so they can keep their jobs. They have they don't give a shit about protecting the community one bit. That's all a crock of shit. 
If they really want to help people make it on the outside, they could, but they don't. And that's going to be more of what I do. But anyway, so here I am out. What am I going to do? I studied the law for 10 years. Literally, I practiced law for 10 years, if you want to call it that. Uh, from my friend, the judge, which I'm going to do an interview with him, actually. Uh, he'll tell you, Larry knows the law, the federal law, but in probably anybody he knows. I, I studied the law for so long. One case is I won 2255s, which is ineffective assistance of counsel to help other inmates get their cases remanded, turned over, resentenced. A number of ways we used to work the law. And I got offered a couple of jobs with law firms to work with them in some capacity or other, writing briefs, doing some research, stuff of that nature. Back in those days, you had what they call shepherdize. Shepherdizing when they didn't have a computer system, you actually had to go to book to book to book and research a case and see that's how you won a case. So anyway, here I am, about six weeks I'm out and a, a bunch of people threw a party for me. And a friend of mine's at the party and he, he comes up to me, I'll never forget this, he says, hey lad, he goes, I need a favor. I looked at him and said, what the fuck? I said, you want me to break somebody's legs? I said, I just got out of the joint. Will you leave me alone? I don't want to get involved. I don't want to do anything. He goes, no, 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 lad. He goes, I caught my 16-year-old smoking pot. And he said, fuck you, dad. Where have you ever been? I said, your son told you, fuck you, dad. Where have you ever been? I said, I'll talk to your son. I says, we set it up for like three days later. And I started to think, what am I going to talk to this kid about? He kind of gave me the hint. He goes, why don't you tell him what you just went through? Because I was telling stories at the party about the shit we went through in prison and how bad it was and, you know, all the negative that's really in prison that nobody knows. Everybody thinks it's all oh, you got, you know, it's, it's, it's a badge of honor. I don't want anybody to ever think that who watches this video that prison's a badge of honor because it's not. So here I am. I'm thinking how to do it and I'm blessed. I have video pic pictures of me in prison which with gang members, uh, heavy hitters, mobsters, people who are dead. Matter of fact, make sure you go to my Instagram and you can see pictures on my Instagram. And I, I, I keep putting up pictures on Instagram and I'm going to do more of that. So anyway, I see, what am I going to do with this kid I'm going to talk to? And I don't know the kid. He was a little kid when I went to prison. I knew the dad well. The dad was a golf pro. So I knew him and I love golf. And I, he says, so I said I'd help him. So I took together a bunch of pictures I had. I took all these pictures and I put them together and I'm looking at them and they're, they're, they're giving me emotions because there's friends of mine that are dead, situations in there that happen, people I know that are good people and never getting out, a lot of stuff like that. So I go into the house. He's got a gazebo in his backyard. We go into the gazebo. He starts telling me about his kid first. So I'm getting an idea what this kid's like. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll be back in a little bit. Don't bother me. He goes, all the time you want, lad, do whatever you want. He goes, I don't give a fuck if you beat the fuck out of him. He goes, do whatever you want. I'm not going to hit him, I said. I just want to talk to him. So I go back in. I was in a shirt like this. Didn't have our logo on it now. But I had a shirt like this, the red cutoff shirt. And I go in, and I go in the room. And the kid's big, bigger than me. But he's a big kid, and he looks at me. And I said only a few curse words to him. I said, you told your father where the fuck he'd been? Let me show you where the fuck I just come from. He looked at me. And I sat down next to him. And I started showing him pictures of dudes. Dudes who were dead. Dudes who were in gangs that got stabbed. One kid who's got one lung. Another kid, young, 24 years old, was killed for a pack of cigarettes in prison. Another kid who screwed his whole life up has got life sentence, never getting out. Another kid who killed someone while he was in there and now he's got a life. He had a five-year sentence. Now he's got life. So I'm telling him all these stories and you can see the kid changing. I'm literally seeing his, his, his wheels turning. And as I'm talking to the kid, it comes later. I, was, I, was, I had to be there almost two hours. So I leave and I, I, I go back out and I said, hey, man, I, I talked to the kid. I, uh, I go, I, you know, he goes, Larry, I appreciate it. Whatever, I can give you money. I was stubborn, pride, didn't really take it. But then I ended up taking it later. But 
he says, you know, I really appreciate all that. And I said, hey, listen to me. Do me a favor. I said, tell me what happened. Tell me how it went. He calls me up about two weeks later. And he says to me, he goes, Larry, he goes, I don't care what you do with your law. He goes, you don't got to work law. He goes, you got to work with kids. My son come up to me and said, Dad, I don't want to go where Mr. Lawton went. I need help. The kid needed help. They got the kid help. And today, that kid, I think, is about 30 years old, successful, and never forgets about what I talked to him. I have young people come up to me today and talk to me about the story I tell about when a kid gets his anus cut from the top of his anus. And I told you that story. And then they found seminal fluid found. So I tell certain stories to young kids that to open their eyes that this is not a joke. This shit is never going to be a joke. And I don't want you to take it as a joke. It's real. This shit is real and it's happening every day. And I, I think about this whole freedom and how it started me on the next part of my life. And, you know, I'm going to end this chapter here. And in chapter 15, I'm going to be talking about the beginning of the reality check program and, and what I do and how I do it and, and why it's so successful and, and what you can do. Uh, and, and even with that, obviously, we got some great responses about the book. You guys know you can watch, listen to these chapters, everything in the links below. Don't forget that. The links below, you can catch everything. Spotify, iTunes. You can pre-order the book still. Uh, it's going to be here in another week. And all set. They're all going out. All you guys who ordered, thank you very much. All, yours is going right out. This is a special edition reality check Gangster Redemption book. The Gangster Redemption book is going to be special edition. We only printed 3,000. And we still have some left. So make sure you get them. Make sure you get you know your books. Twenty bucks. I'm signing all the books. I'm gonna sign them to the people too. So if it's somebody I know and they put a note in there, if if there's no note, I'll just sign the books to you know good luck or something. But I'm signing all the books. So check it out in that link below. You can also get my reality check program, which I'll talk more about how I developed it and whatnot. But that's gonna be in links too and in, in, in future. Uh, videos but make sure you get the book make sure you check us out make sure you support us with the merch you know we're going to be doing another live show here real soon we're doing so much and i really appreciate it and i want everybody to know no matter what i do i'm not gonna stop doing these videos for free i'm gonna might do more videos for the paid members or something someone's telling me to do some stuff i'm gonna do more videos on gta and reviewing products I'm going to do more videos on a TV show that I'm developing. I want to do a court TV show where I interview the dudes who are in court right now. Actually film it. I'm getting the permission to do that. It's going to be a wild series. I think it'll be great. We're going to do it right here. I hope you guys are liking our channel. Please support us in any way you can. Get, get a shirt, get a mug, buy books, do something. Support us in any way you can. We really appreciate it. If you're a big school or if you're something else who want to buy a lot of books for your school, your library, for school projects, it'd be great. It's a hard book. I'm not going to lie. It's a hard book. It tells the truth. I, I don't mince words, as everybody knows. So check it out. And don't be scared. Be honest. You know I'm all for criminal justice reform. I'm all for fixing a broken prison system. Listen. I don't hate cops. I hate bad cops. I don't even like to use the word hate. I cannot stand or I, I really despise cops that are bad, that are not doing the right thing by people, by not helping people. You know, if you're a good cop, good for you. We need you. If anybody says that's all bullshit, I tell people this all the time. If you're if you're getting robbed, who do you call? 911 or 411? Everybody out there, I'm not a cop hater. Actually, I'm the only ex-con with a, with a badge. But I'm a badge because the people are good people. I'm a badge because the cops are the real deal. We'll talk more about them later. But I just want everybody to know, support the good people. Fuck the bad people. And you know what? We're here. Keep the comments coming. Keep supporting us in any way. I really appreciate it. You guys don't even know that. More than you know. Thank you very much. Much love from here. Thank you. Make good choices, stay out of trouble.